Hello, I'm Paolo Del Rosario, and joining me today is someone who has helped engineer Gilas Pilipinas' success in the 19th Asian Games, a gold medal, the first in 61 years. Joining me today is Sir Ricky Vargas. He is the SBP Vice President and PBA Chairman. Chairman Ricky, maraming salamat. Thank you very much for your time. And I'm very honored and very grateful that we're here able to talk about Gilas Pilipinas' journey an unexpected journey to end a 61-year drought for a gold medal for the Asian Games. I'm happy to be here and uh, share my experience in that journey. Thank you, Paolo. So, Ricky, the situation for Gilas Pilipinas is not something that is a secret. It wasn't ideal, especially going to the Asian Games. But there was also a quick turnaround between the FIBA Basketball World Cup and the Asian Games. Just from behind the scenes, what was it like knowing that, okay, we had to get over the whole FIBA World Cup experience really quickly and all of a sudden turn around and get ready for the Asian Games? Actually, probably it started uh, one week before the final game in, in FIBA where we were talking about it. Uh, it, it me, members of the board, uh, Willie, uh, Al Francis, and, and, and uh, Bobby, Bobby, the vice chairman. Mm -hmm. We, we were talking about it and, and we were saying that what happens after FIBA? Do we have a team in, in uh, Southeast Asian Games to, for the Asian Games? The answer was no. Then we said, maybe we should start thinking about it. Then we got uh, SVP on board and then we said, and, and, and got Al Panlilio on board and said, why don't we meet the day after the finals? Mm -hmm. That was a Monday and talk about it. So we met. We met at Diamond Hotel. We mm -hmm. were there. We were talking about what's next. And then that's where it dawned on us that we cannot skip the Asian Games. It's interesting that you mentioned skip the Asian Games. Was that ever an option, at least from the leadership perspective? Was that really something discussed? Or was that something that you felt Okay, na daan lang natin, but then that really was never an option. It 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 was an option. It it was a real option to manage the the pain, actually. So, do we skip it because we're not ready, and and take the pain once that we didn't, or do we just go even if we're not ready and take the pain every game? So if we lose every game, we take the pain. We lose another game, we take the pain. So that, that was a difficult decision because at that time we did not have a coach. And uh, as, as you know, uh, the coaches available were saying that they, 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 they did not want to get involved in the Gilas program. So it was that evening over uh, some wine and beer okay, that we decided to start calling people. And the first person that uh, we called was uh, Tim Cohn. So why Tim Cohn? He's the best for that job. He's a continuity. He knows. He, he has international experience. He, he knows. He knows the players, and uh, he was part of the World Cup coaching staff, and he was an assistant. So that was the first thing we had to do. And kudos to Al Francis. He had a chat with Tim. Tim did not say yes right away until uh, RSA spoke to Tim. And then Tim, Tim said, Let, let's do it. Okay, that, that's, that was the first hurdle. You know, choosing, well, getting Coach Tim Cohn, convincing Coach Tim Cohn to come in for Gilas Pilipinas obviously was a big turning point. You mentioned that not a lot of people wanted to uh, coach uh, Gilas Pilipinas uh, when you were looking for yeah. the new coach. Do you have any idea why uh, why so, especially so soon after the FIBA Basketball World Cup were in? You know, the interest in Gilas was at an all-time high, but then uh, obviously the expectation may be going into the Asian Games. Not a lot of people were sure what to expect, really. Paolo, it, it, we didn't have a team. So I don't think a, a coach would want to coach in the Asian Games without a team. The time frame was too short and... Uh, there were no practices, there were no players, they were all gone, okay? And uh, even our players uh, who played in the Japanese league were, were all gone. 
So it did not have a set of players that we felt could be competitive. So which coach would like to put their themselves in that position when it's doomed not to succeed? So that's why Kudos team. He said he was willing to do it. So that that made us all excited. No? And and well, Alban Lilio, for example, was was all out for it. Mm -hmm. And then when we went to our principal sponsors, uh, RSA and MVP, they they just gave us the courage to say that go. Mm -hmm. okay. And it was important to have that. You mentioned there was no team. There was a list, though, of 60 names submitted uh, earlier, earlier on, and it was a list that could have been that could be edited, could be trimmed down moving forward. But then, as we all know right now, there were issues with those lists eventually as we came closer to the date. Let's start out first with the initial list. What was that initial list for those who are wondering? It, it, it was a list of 60 players that, that if they were all available, we, it, it was a good list. Then that's trimmed down to 37 for what reason, I, I don't know. And that was the list that we were working on. And that list consisted of players from the UAP, players who were in Japan, players who were not available. To come, and, and we were left with six or eight players to choose from. So from there, we, we, we took the best that, that could fit the, the vision or the passion that we wanted in the team. So as I said, we did not put together a team that is the most excellent team on paper. Yeah. But we were able to manage a team and put to them together to to be competitive in such a short time uh, in the PBA. Well, Chairman, I don't want to you know open up old wounds, but when we look at the entire process of the selection of the players and including the entire list, uh, a lot of people are wondering, one, if there's, if we have any answers to one who made the list, and two, why that list was submitted in the first place, because that was a lot of confusion. I remember there were around two press conferences about the uh, players to be selected, including the, uh, revealing the list to our friends in the media. So for those wondering where those actually came from, the entire process of it, is there any light now, now that we're looking back at those moments? Well, I, I stopped asking that question, who was accountable for, for that mm -hmm. list. As I think people know who they are, no? But it, it was not, it's no longer helpful at that time to, to seek who was responsible for that list. But what was important, Paolo, was when we talked to the players, the players wanted to play. So that, that, that was very important. And as Al Francis talked to them, each one of them, and, and they just said, we want to play. So when your players want to play, who are we to say that we should not go? Who are we to say that we're not ready? Okay, who are we to say that we can't help you? Okay, sorry, you want to play, but you know, we, you're, you're not winners, no? That, that, that was the most important ingredient for us, yeah. Boss Ricky, you take a look at the players. We take a look at the, the will to represent the country. I remember hearing it from uh, Boss Al Francis, I remember hearing from the players themselves about the decision process that they had to make to tell everyone that we want to play even if kulang kami, even if we don't have the 12 players Absolutely. available. Just how inspiring was it for you, the leadership, to hear that the players were willing to play no matter what, kahit dahado sila going into the Asian Games? Uh, uh, for me, that was the, the height of our, that, that was the reason one of the biggest reasons why we succeeded in, in, in the Asian Games was we wanted it, we wanted to play, and winning was, was not even discussed. Uh, we just wanted to play, and they just wanted to play, and they just wanted to represent the country. Mm -hmm. And we did not even think about winning. Actually, Paolo, in, it was okay to have been number four. When, when we got to number four, I was happy. It was okay because that in itself, we thought we could not achieve. You know? mm -hmm. We could not achieve. 
we had less than two weeks of incomplete practices. We had one scrimmage and uh, all the rest was beyond basketball. It was camaraderie, it was talking to each other, it was getting together, it was building relationships. It was all beyond the basketball court. It was not talking about a zone defense or what is my philosophy. No, it was all about getting together. And, and, kita mo, di ba? We had more time together than we had more time to practice. Can you imagine that? And we were able to come out with a competitive team, even when we were losing by 20 points. That, that brought them together in the dugout. That reminded them that they were friends, they were families, they needed each other in, 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 in halftime. And they said, the only way we'll win is that we are together. And they and we trusted that they can do it. So there was very little technical uh, plans that we had to do. It it was more getting them together. More more. Kana ahead na kami Paolo, kasi hundred percent they want to eh. Yeah. So the rest is let's get together. So that was that's what that was the secret. What really impressed me was that when faced with problems, a group so haphazardly put together could have easily went apart, but instead it felt like it brought them all closer. There were also issues in the airport, even right before they got on the plane with the play, some of the players not receiving their accreditation 30 minutes before the flight. Kevin Alas mentioned that he had to basically run from the entrance of Naia to the to the plane right before boarding because they received our accreditation so late. Just what was going through your head, that, sir, that, throughout the entire time? You know, when they finally were able to to ride the plane, it was victorious. We were all happy, you know, and and we were saying, "Wow, uh, it this must be it, right? This must be it." Um, they 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 were there. They wanted to go. And the team was 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 waiting for them. I, I think the the whole philosophy of the the team, like uh, the the management team or or the leaders in the group, that yes we have problems, but let's go and find the solutions. Mm-hmm. That was one part. And the other part is let's shield the 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 players from the issues. That is our accountability. That is our responsibility. Let's shield the players from from the issues. Yeah. So we 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 were all together in trying to solve solve the problem. The other thing that that was different is uh, while we were management, we were all part of the the family because, as I said, no, they they the building of character and race was important. We were part of it. Yeah. We were we were carrying the the food for them. We were preparing everything for them. We were walking with them. We were eating with them. So uh, it became fun. Mm-hmm. So more than the pressure, it became fun. And they started having fun. And they started believing in, in, in what they can do. And I thought that's, that's, that's no, no, no secret. That's really no secret. It's just that we were together. Chairman, I'm going to list down a few of the problems you've had before the tip-off of the very first game. Uh, okay. <laughs> and I, I just want to pick your brain on how mentally, emotionally you all got through it as uh, a group. Here's one problem. Your, the team bus was not allowed inside the yeah, venue. Yeah. It had to be outside and the team had to walk from each ven- outside each venue uh, from a different distance compared to other teams. When you got there, some members of the staff, including uh, Mam YR, Yvette Ruiz, a team coordinator, was not allowed to stay on the bench. There are members, key members of the staff who weren't allowed to stay with the team on the game day. And right before the tip-off of the very first game, some of the names on the team sheet that was given to Coach Tim and Coach Richard Del Rosario was wrong. The numbers were not assigned correctly and their signatures were already forged on the team sheet. And there was actually talk about them not being allowed to play because their numbers were wrong. There were so many things going on, even right before the tip-off. 
was there any tinge of doubt coming from uh, the management team, coming from the people working to help put Gilas Pilipinas there in the first place that we're here, but still we might not be able to at least show up and show out here in China? The funny thing about it, well, as, as I look back, uh, the first, my first time, we were looking for solutions. No? But the other thing, we were all together in the pain. So they, they, they saw that what they were going through is also what we were going through, the, the management. And they also saw that management was fighting, fighting for them no? and, and looking after them. So, so we had their back. We had their back. So they also saw that, that, that the team management uh, could not enter the dugout. So they knew that, and that, the, and that that did not become an issue. It became an issue for us, but for them, we said that we may not be there, but we will be in the bleachers watching you. Mm -hmm. Because that's where we were. We were in the bleachers watching them. And they knew that we walk with them all the time. So they, they felt we were present even if we were absent. No? So uh, how, how do you feel that? Then we, were to, we are together uh, when we ride the bus going out. We walked with them outside. All the fans were, we waited for our bus outside in the middle of the street, you know. But, but it was happy. We did not uh, look at it as a, a problem. But deep inside us, it was. But we looked at it as something positive. So go, go with the fans. They were having picture yeah. taking with, with, with the fans. Mahirap yung naging problema. I would not. I uh, looking at us as FIBA hosts. Yeah. Uh, we were a country that was not only hospitable, but who looked for solutions for issues. Uh, what I felt in in in. Uh, in the Asian Games is they were nice, they were hospital, but they will not, they're by the book. Yeah. They will not offer you solutions. Mm -hmm. If you say you turn right, you turn right. They will not even listen to your, yeah. to your arguments. It is what it is. Did it help that we all know that there is a bit of colorful history between the Philippines and China in previous tournaments within China? Uh, people remember what happened in Changsha, uh, wherein there was an issue with the bus before for Giles Pilipinas going to the gold medal match or the court had to be fixed right before. I know that was such a very long time ago, but then some people did bring that back up when you talk about can Giles Pilipinas get a fair shake in terms of the preparation, in terms of even before the ball is tipped in China. Did that come into your head when you encountered those no, initial we, problems? We, we anticipated it and we shared it you might expect. Mm -hmm. So anything that happened, they, they knew. And we also talked about how to react and not bother them because that's not their issue, that's our issue. Their only issue is to play their best in court. So that's our issue. So by being able to anticipate it, it, it made it easier. So it was not, wow, we what happened? No, it's yeah. not, so we told you it could happen, right? The only thing that we were not able to anticipate was uh, the first day of practice. Alamo, it's it's crazy, huh? We we arrived the hotel. We wanted to do practice. We were brought to a community court. May naglalaro pa sa kabi. Wala pang bola. Kita sa umalis pa yung bus. Iniwang kami don. So what do you do? Yeah, so we, we, we stayed there, we comforted each other, we were mad, but we said, let's get it out of our system. We called the bus, took the bus, and we went back to the hotel. But thing is, take it out of your system, it should not affect you. Mm -hmm. Easier said than done. Shielding the players, but for us organizers, we were furious, mm -hmm. but we would not show that to, to, to the players. Chairman, let's talk about the actual basketball now, mm. because <laughs> din special tina natin eh. mm. But let's talk about the fact that 
it must have felt like a breath of fresh air with Gilas Pilipinas winning its first assignment in the Asian Games. First of all, how did it feel to actually field a complete team of 12 players in the first game in the Asian Games? Again, actually, they won their first two games, Bahrain and Thailand. How did it feel to actually see it all come together? And the team looked good in those first two games. Okay na nga ako sa fourth place. Eh. So I said, uh, okay na ako, we go home, fourth place, happy. But when we beat uh, Iran, was it yeah. Iran? Yeah. And, and we had a chance to beat China, I said, I changed my mind. I said, maybe it's time for us to go for the gold. But on that note, sir, we did lose first against Jordan. Jordan, yeah. What was the thought during that loss because it was a convincing win by Jordan, especially towards that fourth quarter. Ronde Hollis Jefferson in particular yeah. looked like he was the best player there uh, and was able to really lead Jordan to what turned out to be a win that it felt like at least showcased the weaknesses of Gilas Pilipinas. Ako, uh, I was down and out. I, I was telling myself, Nako. Uh, mahirap ito, di ba? We have to pass to, through Iran, we have to pass to China. So, that's, that's just, that, let's just be happy with, 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 with what we have. No? Yeah. So, losing to Jordan, to be honest, I expected we would lose to Jordan. Mm, okay. I really did. Uh, so, I was calm in the, what, watching it. I, I really expected we'd lose to Jordan, but not by that much. But after we lost to Jordan, the team inside the dugout, I could feel, felt they could beat Jordan. And they wanted to meet Jordan again. So, so and then Tim was also saying, I want to meet Jordan. They, they were not even thinking of China. Mm -hmm. but I, I want to meet Jordan. We will meet Jordan again. We will meet Jordan again. Tim was, well, if I say this, was went berserk in the in, 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 in the in the dugout, no? Because he felt that we could have played better. But then that that made us closer. It it there was a bonding process that happened after that. So I felt we could beat Jordan. Then we then we went to we played uh, China, right? Yes, uh, we played Iran first. Uh, Iran, we, yeah. we won against Iran. Yes, but I actually want to talk about that oh, game, oh. sir, because that game against Iran, we were up, I believe, by 21 points. Yeah. Then humabul sila. That fourth quarter, oh. just how cardiac was that uh, fourth quarter I, I, for I you? I almost died. <laughs> <laughs> but but in the in the dugout, you know what Tim puts on on the white whiteboard is win by one. So, we won by one. <laughs> so, then I said, don't do that again. It will kill you in, in that process. Now you won by one. Then I said, wow, pwede. So if we beat China, we're in the, we're, we're, we're in the, we're either third place, fourth place, or second place. I didn't even think of gold. I didn't even think of gold. I thought Jordan was was the was the better team. We we were actually we're actually marching towards that right now in this conversation, Chairman. And that you mentioned happy ka na sa fourth. Happy but na po. people forget in 2018 we actually finished around seventh, around that range uh -huh. with Jordan Clarkson playing for the first time with Coach Yang Giao and uh, the then Gilasto Painters. But then you take a look at this group right now, uh, barging into the medal rounds going to compete against China, going to potentially compete, I think it was against uh, Jordan and or Korea. What were you thinking the night before the China game? Because you say you're happy with fourth, but then going up against a Chinese team that was expected to bounce back from the FIBA Basketball World Cup and was going to be one of the most viewed events in the Asian Games within China and in the Philippines, I could only imagine what was going through your head. China, I was 120% wanting to win for, for many reasons. So, that is sabi ko, okay na ako sa, 
sa support, di ba? Pero when when we got over Iran, then we had to play China. I what we really wanted to win China. So we talked about it. Um, we said we can do it by God's grace. Again, by one point. <laughs> Chairman, I, I, I hindi ko na alam kung ano nangyari, no? When, when, when I, I think Sheno was beside me and me and Bobby. I, I was just, uh, I don't know, I was, I don't know if I was concentrating or not, but he says, Chairman, Chairman, uh, we're ahead by one point. I didn't even hear that. <laughs> we're ahead. I only, what, what I only knew was after that, we, we won. Chairman, we were down by around 20 points in the third quarter, maybe even early in the fourth. And then we were actually trailing by seven points with around one minute left before uh, a guy named Justin Brownlee, I think everyone knows who he is, uh, was able to hit the shots that he did. But admittedly, talking to most of the media, most of the play- some of the players, and anyone who was invested in that game, there was no eh. going into that fourth quarter. Uh-oh. Just looking and just taking a look at the roller coaster of emotions that you had mm-hmm. in that particular moment. What were they, especially when China had a 20-point lead at the middle of that second half? Give up, na. Give up, na talaga. Pero the you, you couldn't give up because the bench, the team wasn't giving up. So, ako from from uh, from my point of view, watching. Give up na. Sabi ko patay na, uwi na tayo. We should just be happy. I was already thinking of justification to to feel good, to feel happy, and all that. That's why all of a sudden, we're up by one. Sabi ko, uy! <laughs> so, then that's when the adrenaline came back and, and, and all that. No, I was not even watching anymore that we were we were catching up. Ganun ako eh, di ba? So, I had... I apologize to the team that I gave up when they were not giving up. You know? If 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 I were not in Hangzhou, I would probably walk out. <laughs> that tama na ito. I would go to the players. Okay, na yan. Don't hurt yourself. But it happened, you know? So it, it's a learning for me too. Na kaya pala. Mm-hmm. Wag lang, just don't give up. Just continue and 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 uh, trusting each other. So the ball went to. To Brownlee, yeah, he said, "I can do this mm-hmm. in his mind," and he shot those two threes, Diba? Two three pointers from the opposite sides of the wing. One of them being the dagger, and there was a moment, especially in the last possession. So Justin Brownlee hits a three pointer, stuns the crowd of China in the venue, and there was still a defensive possession that needed to be played. There was a timeout. Yeah, it and, felt like the longest timeout a, ever. They, they they had a chance to shoot, right? And they, no. It, uh, after that, I I said to myself, it was such a privilege, Paolo, to have been there and watched it live, as it probably was a privilege for everyone who followed it uh, on on TV. And uh, thank to you guys, you brought it TV. It it was it was brought to many of the Filipino fans and to to watch. And it was a privilege to be there. Chairman, can you describe the mood around the venue in your own words? Uh, people have heard me talk about it a, a while, pero iba rin yung perspective niyo. And not only that, you also do converse with some Chinese officials from time to time. I'm not sure if they were there in the venue, if you ran into anyone. Pero what was the atmosphere for you? In, in the venue, uh, especially when we watch the Chinese game. Ah, it was like uh, no one's cheering for you. <laughs> okay, so but we were cheering and and the the Chinese people were very tolerant. They 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 did not shout at us, they they did not give us dagger looks. They they were tolerant. They were they were good sports, I thought. They were they were good sports. And they allowed us to vent 
our our uh, cheers and to vent all the Tagalog words that we had to say, right? So that they couldn't understand. Safe for airing the Tagalog words. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, all joking, I won't let you answer that. But <laughs> moving on <laughs> to the fact that, okay, I, I personally, right in front of me was Yao Ming uh, right after the final buzzer. Obviously, he was not happy. Uh -huh. But then, did any of your counterparts from the CBA reach out uh, ab about this? Or did you have a chance to talk to any Chinese official right after the matchup between Gilas and China? Not that I know of. But prior to that, uh, Alpan Lilio wrote a, a, an email to Yang Ming about what we were, have been experiencing. Mm -hmm the team has been experiencing in, in China and, and sought some help from, from Yao Ming. Mm -hmm. I think Yao Ming replied back and said he will do what, what he can. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, at least the communication was there. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, do we have any details of if, whether or not the, Yao Ming was able to help directly Giles Filipinas in terms of their trip there, their stay there? The, the only thing I know, Paolo, after we beat China, the next game, our bus was allowed to enter. Uh, I was. We were all allowed proper uh, entrance in, in 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 the dugout. Our PT was able to sit uh, near the bench and 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 work with 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 our players. So that, that's all I know. So whether that's that's because we were in the championship round or it or another message that was sent or it, it's it, it's just a fact that. After that, everything was was what we wanted it to be. Yeah. German, that's that's a, a, a great development, of course, uh, being able to see that and being able to feel that. And right now, I can only imagine what the reaction would have been like in the dugout and the practices after. It must have felt already like the But let me game. tell you. Yes, sir, go ahead. After we beat Jordan, the Chinese people were all for us. When we went out, uh, they 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 probably, they loved us. They they actually loved us. And and I I think you've seen this when you walk out of the dugout on your way to the bus. And our bus was already waiting outside, huh? Mm -hmm. Not kami naglakad. Yeah, waiting outside. Palakpakan eh, di ba? So so sabi ko, wow, iba ito, ha? <laughs> It was a different experience for <laughs> Mahal sure. Mahal palatay nito mato, ha? So so that was. I guess everybody wanted us to win in that in that game. It was adulation earned, uh, Sir Chairman. And when you take a look at the focus required for that game, because beating China, a lot of people felt that it's a gold medal game. Na yun eh, but uh. it still had to be won. That gold medal still had to be won. And you're going up against, lo and behold, Jordan. When that matchup was finalized, when uh, now, okay, we have to put the, the China game aside, how did Coach Tim, how did the management get everyone focused for this? Because this was is supposed to be the biggest game, even though the China game was already huge. But it was a chance to end a 61-year drought for a gold medal. They, they asked for it. They said it was the wish of, of uh, Tim Cohn. And he told, he told the players that, yeah, we're here. We will not lose twice against against Jordan and he was planning the game even before we played China. He already knew how to play Jordan. He was already looking at beyond China. Can you imagine that? He was looking, he's looking beyond China. So, so he was pretty positive about, yeah. about it. He was really the confidence was there. Uh, Jordan didn't have the same type of fight that they had compared to their first meeting. Gilas looked like a different team. In the end, it was a relatively comfortable win for Gilas Filipinas uh, from a basketball point of view. But then finally, the final buzzer, the win. It's always an emotional moment hearing the national anthem and a gold medal ceremony. But could you imagine that it would have that this team assembled in around 12 days with five of the players coming in only have four days of practice in the Philippines coming into China whose bus initially was not allowed in the venue who did not have a practice venue who didn't even have balls to practice ended up singing the national anthem for the gold medal 
putting all that together, just how did it feel for you and everyone involved? Very proud moment uh, for me personally and for the whole team uh, inside the dugout. They were, uh, the emotions were very high. The emotions were very high. And, you know, uh, foes in the PBA, but one in, 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 in China, in, in the Asian Games. Then after that, it was, you know, we, we, didn't, we didn't have a chance to, to say a prayer after, after the game. So when we all went up to, to have dinner together, that's when we all sat down and, and, and said a prayer of thanksgiving for, for what had happened. Coming home with the gold medal after 61 years, and it was a very strange, strange moment because no one expected it, especially with the type of preparation that they've had, but eventually able to celebrate it in their own right. Coming home though, it became a bit more disappointing because of the fact that the testing of Justin Brownlee did come out yeah, yeah. soon after. Uh, what was their initial reaction when it came to that? Because I remember reading it for the first time and then suddenly having to look at the different rules and laws about whether or not doping could actually mean you surrender a medal. That, that, that was the biggest fear, uh, mine, that we would lose the gold medal, but not of the team. Surprisingly, when you talk to, to the players, because they believe it is theirs. So the doping is an incident, yes, they can take away the gold medal, but they felt it was theirs. But I wanted the gold. I wanted the gold to, to stay. That, that was one part. This, the other part is how they would protect uh, Brownlee from, from all of this. The, the camaraderie was very strong that they, they were all ready to protect Brownlee from, this, from, from uh, whatever backlash. The whole team was ready to protect Brownlee from whatever brothers. I'm glad there was not much. There is still nothing definite about what Brownlee is as of this date. Yeah, but uh, he's 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 a hero to to basketball. To 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 his contribution to Philippine basketball is is amazing. And I don't think that incident can be taken out. From from him, uh, meaning he, it's um, it's a. Uh, I understand it's uh, it's 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 medical uh, mm -hmm. med medical uh, uh, prescription that that was given to him. So, is it any uh, for those who are criticizing? Well, at least uh, there has been criticism from Chinese fans, I'm sure, about the whole doping incident. Is there is that? of any concern to you or the team, knowing that there is a bit of um, criticism because of the positive doping result? Mm, uh, to me personally, none, except my fear that they would have taken away the gold mm -hmm. medal. So the POC made sure that uh, we kept the gold medal and that gold medal is enshrined, okay? That the next four years we are the gold medalist and in the Asian Games in 2023, it was the Philippines. So we, we wanted to enshrine that because 61 years ago, it was enshrined, right? Yeah. Now it was enshrined. And I'm so proud to be part of it. Privilege, I mean, yeah. to, to be part of it. Can you imagine, Paolo, if we said, no, we're not ready to join. So, ang, ang lesson dito, kung kaya mo, maski hindi ka masyado nag-ready, Basta lagay mo lang yung puso mo. Go in mo. Because you want to do it eh. Then, and guess what? You might be lucky to win by one point. <laughs> win by one point, survive by one point. So much <laughs> of that. Uh, I have a feeling you should but put that on the wall. But it only takes one point. Eh? <laughs> it only takes one point to win. <laughs> one point. Absolutely. Tama ka uh, But when you take a look at what this means to the entirety of the history of Philippine basketball, uh, at least in the modern age, the Gilas Pilipinas age, it's just... Is this the biggest achievement we've had? Because there's a lot in contention there. Returning to the FIBA Basketball World Cup stage, being able to host, there's so many things to be proud about. But where does this rank for you in recent memory? Well, well again, uh, 
when we look at the future, uh, what, what this has taught us is, one, uh, it's important to get the best play, player around the world. But what, is, what will give you the win is the player that wants to, to play. Okay? Not because of any reason, but he wants to play, asks for nothing, and is proud to play for the Philippine flag. That is one of the biggest learnings uh, we have had because we've invited many players and, and we've invited them and maybe they're half-hearted for, for saying yes or for, any, or for any other reason. All these players said yes. Called up 12 night, midnight, they were there at 6 o'clock in the morning at, uh, at Inspire. So that, that, that motivation to play. Now, you might find it corny, corny, but they wanted to play for country. They did not want to play for anything else. They wanted to play for country because the first thing we said there, I, I was there. If we're forcing you to play for country, we won't take it against you. You can go. And we appreciate you coming. Yeah. German, it has been an incredible journey. Asian Games, obviously we also came back from the FIBA Basketball World Cup. And you know, just curious because a lot of people are wondering, so what's next for Philippine basketball? And you have a unique role because you're also chairman of PBA. I was just wondering whether or not the ex entire experience with Gilas, complete with the FIBA Basketball World Cup ho hosting, the preparation for Gilas Filipinas, the fact that it's composed of completely and a PBA players uh, with the addition of Ange Kawame. Just what can the PBA take from this? How can the PBA develop and even grow from this, from this entire experience, especially right now? All the focus is now back on local basketball. All the focus is on learning and building from these things. That, that was a risk that the PBA, talking from the PBA standpoint, had to evaluate. So we, we put a team together, a team that we did not expect could win. And we knew if we played poorly, it's going to affect the PBA. It's going to hit the PBA hard. But the Board of Governors says, let's do it. Okay, uh, this is Philippine basketball. Aren't we Philippine basketball? Let's do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we've been down before, let's do it. They, they took the risks. Mm -hmm. And now with winning the Asian uh, uh, gold, I think it only helps the, the PBA. Chairman, mm -hmm. uh, with that in mind also, because a lot of people are thinking, okay, in Susunod Nagilas, FIBA OQT. Uh, there's also, obviously, with the hope to end up with the Olympics. And the PBA will play a big part in terms of the composition of the players, maybe even the coaches. But back to normal in PBA. The PBA adjusted so much for international basketball, SPP and Gilas Pilipinas. Then there are so many calls for PBA to become more modern, add more teams, so forth and uh, so on and so forth. You take a look at all of that. Well, how big is the challenge here for the PBA to help build the SBP and Gilas Pilipinas and international basketball? Now that we're all trying to come back together, build from this, and still come back to normal, para yeah. magbuhay rin yung PBA. No, no, tough, tough. Uh, Pinag-uusapan na namin yan ng SBP. On what role we can play. And, and not only PBA. Uh, the SBP is a whole community of, of basketball tournaments and leagues and, 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 and membership. No? So... It has to be, we should be able to call the whole community to sit down and talk about basketball. It, it, it was tried before, no? but not too successful. I think we just have to put it on the table. The first thing you have to do is agree on your schedule. Because alam mo naman yung open schedule ng FIBA, eh, di ba? So agree on your schedule. Alam mo rin naman kung kailan yung Asian Games, at least yung month. Alam mo rin naman kung kailan yung Southeast Asian Games. Pwede ba Southeast Asian Games, kayo na lang bahala doon. Pwede ba FIBA and OQT, kayo na lang bahala doon. So, it's, it's, it's giving, sharing that responsibility and accountability. 
It's also bringing in more of the private sector, bringing or the combination of MVP and RSA is fantastic, right? Mm -hmm. So how can you beat that? That was the other inspiration we had when mm -hmm. we did the, the Asian Games. They were there. They were there all the time. Yes. Uh, uh, you'd hear from RSA talking to Al Francis. You'd hear from MVP talking to me, sending messages and all that. So pressure din kami. So, hindi maalis yun. So, you need to strengthen that in the SBP. They're all part of it. You need to strengthen the relationship with UAP, NCAA, the basketball community. That, that, that's where we are. But first and foremost is you need to have a sense of nationalism that they want to. Wala nang pilitan, di ba? And uh, yes, we can be better if we, we, we are able to put our act together. No? Uh, we want to go to the Olympics. Baka may pag-asa, di ba? Baka may pag-asa tayo pumunta sa Olympics. Pero ngayon pa lang, let's start working on it. So we're awaiting for that program that may, may, may start uh, uh, for the basketball community to address. For the SBP to address, put it together. Chairman, we really appreciate your time. Uh, we took a lot more than uh, I think we initially agreed upon. Pero pumuti lang gracious ka. Uh, salamat, Chairman. We can't wait to see what uh, Giras Pilipinas, what the SPP, what the PBA will do next to build on what this gold medal journey was. An unexpected gold medal. Oh, nga. Oh, yeah. nga. For 61 years, uh, finally over, and uh, an enshrining of that gold medal. And hopefully, we don't have to wait that long for the next one. Well, uh, I hope so too, that uh, I'm still alive when we get the next one. <laughs> so I hope it's not 61 years, right? Yeah, 100%. I, don't, oh. I also hope I don't have to wait 61 years for the next one as well. But you Maram still be here. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Sir Ricky Vargas, the SPP Vice President and PBA Chairman. I'm Paolo Del Rosario. Thank you for joining us once Thank again. Thank you. Thank you.